Hey, what's up guys? Today I want to do a video about music. Um, last week, uh, everybody was posting their Spotify, like top artists, top songs of 2020, stuff like that, which, you know, some people who are like on the truth train, you could say, were like, oh dude, that's totally gay or whatever. And uh, I didn't think it was that gay. I thought it was kind of cool, first of all, because it's based on statistics of like what you listen to for the for the past year. And I'm a statistics nerd, so I like it for that reason, you know. But a deeper reason why I liked it is because some people, their choices, uh, well, it wasn't, I guess it wasn't some level their choice, but what they happened to listen to over the course of the last year surprised me. Um, like, I saw some some results that I wouldn't expect from certain people, you know. And it goes to show you how little you probably know about someone, you know, because uh, music is the highest art. And I could do a separate video on that. Uh, it's actually quite simple, but it deserves its own, like, lengthy video for a full explanation, I would say. Um, but, but anyway, yeah, music's the highest art, and how you respond to it, how you interact with it, your musical taste, all of this stuff really reflects something about your soul about who you truly are. Um, that's why there are all these, like, discussions in scientific realms about, like, is there a correlation between intelligence and music taste or music genre taste, you know? And then they show, like, statistics that show a correlation between ACT scores or SAT scores and, uh, and like, musical genres, like the highest end people listen to classical music, generally speaking, um, and the lowest listen to, like, country music and pop music and, uh, like, like, rap that's not good, you know? And so, um, yeah, so, like, there's this idea, uh, already in, you know, in the academic realms and the formal realms, we could call them, uh, of inquiry, that suggest or at least want to believe that there's, you know, some connection between musical taste and, uh, you know, how cognitively capable you are, I guess we could say. Uh, so anyway, I was surprised at a lot of people's answers, you know, like some people gave better answers than I thought. Um, and I'm going based on the assumption that my taste is good and that I can judge others' tastes more objectively because my taste is better than theirs. Anyway, had to clear that up. But that's like the assumption I have to make in making this video and saying the things that I'm saying right now. But I do think it's true and I can make a case for it. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, some people surprised me. Um, had like better taste than I expected them to. And then other people had like, who I thought maybe listened to good, like better music. Um, it was like all like shit pop music, top 40 stuff, you know? And I was like, really? Like, I thought that person was fucking smart, you know? <laughs> like, that's just the response that I had, and I think that's like a common belief, you know? Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I didn't, so I didn't post my top five, uh, favorite songs, or favorite artists, because that's not really how I listen to music. I listen to albums, at a time. I listen to one album all the way through, basically on repeat for maybe a couple of months until I know the whole album in my head. I could play it back in my head. Um, and until I really like understand the composition, like not just technically, but spiritually, more spiritually than technically, you know, listening to music and understanding it is, it's a spiritual experience and it's, it's a spiritual exercise and an exercise in patience, and an exercise in, like, I would say, um, seeing connections between things, because when you listen to music for the first time, you don't hear everything. One thing may pop out at you, maybe it's the lyrics, you know, maybe it's the bass, if you're, like, a bass-oriented person. Some people just are. Uh, maybe it's the guitar. If you're a chick who likes to date guitarists, you probably listen to that more than you listen to lyrics, you know? Um... So, uh, yeah, it's, it's really a deep exercise and I, I, I guess I could put it this way. Like I listen to an album until 
I understand it. And until I've, like, mastered it, if that makes sense. It's like, what is music? Music's kind of just a bunch of ideas composed together. And that's how it is with my band, you know? Uh, like, when we write a song, we already have lots of ideas established already. And then it's just about finding the right transition to gel them together. That's what good composition is, you know? It's a bunch of bits tied together in a way that just works, you know? So anyway, I, I didn't post my top five, but um, cause that's not how I listen to music. They didn't have a top five albums option. And that would be, you know, so one of, like there was a Deftones album that would be on my top five if, there, if I had a top five albums, right? But if I did it all by songs, um, then it would be like the first five, it, like top, my top five songs of 2020 would probably be the first five songs off of that album. So that doesn't give you a well-rounded picture of like my musical taste for the year. Cause I, I listen to music differently. So the statistics don't apply to me is kind of what I'm saying. It's like, I got something from that Deftones album and I got something else from something else that I listened to that, that was just as important. I just didn't happen to listen to that whole album all the way through as many times as the Deftones album. So anyway, I'll give my top five right now. Um, Cause people ask me about music sometimes and I have a friend, an internet friend, who's like always asking me to do more Philosophy Friday videos on philosophy of music. And I'm like, yo, like I did it twice already, you know? So anyway, my top five. First uh, would be that Deftones album. It's Koi no Yokan, uh, written in 2012. And uh, it was recommended by my friend David Player, who's the guitarist in my band as well, um, who always has good musical taste. Uh, he just, he listens to so much music, it's like bombardment, you know, constantly. But that was an album that I actually checked out that he suggested, and it was fucking good. And uh, it was my most, probably my most played album this year. Uh, why? It's just very well composed as an album. It's a bunch of songs put together, but also the order of the songs works, you know? It's almost like an entire composition itself, because the transitions are smooth within songs and between songs. And also, it's just a solid, like, progressive, alternative metal album. Like... And I think probably Deftones' most underrated album. Um, of course, everyone's going to make the claim that White Pony's their best. But uh, I, would, I would say that Koi no Yokan, as a single composition, you know, and despite not having the hit singles that <laughs> White Pony did, I would say that Koi no Yokan overall is a better album. Shoot me, Deftones fans, but you're fucking biased because you're, you're too deep in the shit. You know, you got to... You gotta watch the stream from the bank. If you're in the river, you're being taken by the current and you have no control over how you perceive the situation. Um, so to call yourself a fan immediately admits that you're biased. That goes with anything. Anyway, that's another discussion. Um, my second album would be uh, the album Hideout by Film School. It's just cool, like dark indie album written in 2000 or uh recorded in 2007 i think could have been written way before that like my fucking band we're recording songs right now we wrote 10 fucking years ago anyway um yeah it's like it's it's just a cool dark indie album it reminds me of actually the third album i'm gonna name right now and that is jane's lament by aura spelled a u period r a no spaces they're a duo, like a dark, kind of similar style, dark indie duo uh, from Sydney, Australia, I believe. They're not well known. But check that out. Jane's Lament by Aura, A-U period R-A, and also um, Film School's album Hideout, which is, uh, they're, they're very similar in style. Um, fourth, I would say Past is Prologue by Tycho. Uh, Tycho's an uh, instrumental group um but in this particular this is their first album his first album i can't remember the guy's name who started Tycho, but it started as like an electronic beats uh sort of you know you know uh vibey style of music with real guitar laid over it and real like keys and stuff um 
but uh, they now have a full band. But anyway, this is the first album. This is the more electronic one. Uh, it just has a nice melancholy to it, you know. Um, it's like consistent all the way through, style-wise, uh, and has enough variation to keep it interesting. And it's just very good, like kind of lo-fi, uh, chillin' music. And it's great to have on the background. Uh, actually, when I lived in London and I was working at um, Albertine Wine Bar and Shepherd's Bush, free shout-out, bitches, even though you fired me. Um, <laughs> it's a cool place, not going to lie. Uh, and part, part of the reason it's cool is because when I worked there, I used to play um, Tycho, like a Tycho playlist in the background, and it kind of like provided a chill, like kind of, you know, dope atmosphere. Um, so anyway, yeah. Uh, Tycho's first album, Past His Prologue, I highly recommend that one, um, at least for like, you know, uh, your elevator, your local elevator. Um, and then fifth, uh, it's it's hard to sp like pick one album, because I really only listened to those four albums on a repeat. There were other albums I kind of cycled through that I revisited back in the day, from back in the day, or... Uh, you know, or maybe there was like an artist that I had on shuffle. So I'm going to name two things for my number five. And that'll kind of count as like a fifth thing because neither really takes the position. So uh, I would say Sand Scout, two of my buddies uh, from London. They have this electronic, it was kind of like Tycho's first album in that it was like electronic music with real guitars overlaid. And it's very vocally driven. It's really cool, very melancholy, like indie electronica, um, lo-fi stuff as well. And I would say that, like technically, one thing they do really well is leave the right amount of space between notes and between beats. Like they make very good use of what's not there rather than what they actually put into it. So it's very sparse, airy music. And uh, I highly recommend checking them out. They're, they're quite unique. And uh, they're not for everybody, at least on first listen. But the more you listen to them, uh, the, more you, the more complexity you see, the more thought that um, is obvious went into the composition. And uh, they're really talented guys. I would highly recommend checking them out. And then the second thing, so that that's an artist that I just had on repeat because they have like a couple of EPs out and stuff. Just listen to all their music on shuffle. Uh, it doesn't really matter to listen to all their music in uh, in order. There are certain artists who for whom that matters. Others, not so much. Um, but anyway, the, the other thing, uh, so there's that, Sand Scout from London. And also, what do I want to say? Oh yeah, uh, so the other like co-winner of the fifth position, uh, fifth, it's a weird word, right? Like twelfth, fucking English. Anyway, the co-winner of the fifth position in my uh, top, you know, year 2020 music in general, I guess, uh, but also albums would be uh, an old school album that I revisited. That is It's All In Your Head by Eve Six. It was their uh, third album. And by sales, I think it was their least successful one. And that's actually why they broke up as a band, is because they didn't sell enough of this album. Which is a huge shame, because I have all of their albums, and that one's the best. Just as a, again, as a composition, like how I've been talking about songs flowing into one another, having like good energy fluctuation and transitions between songs, but also having the songs themselves be very well composed and um, having a, a consistent style that flows through the album. Like there's, there's this stream of something that, that flows through the album that ties it all together. You know, it's all in your head by Eve Six had that. Whereas I think their other albums, not so much. And also the songs are fucking dope. Like, it's it's one of those, <laughs> like, punk, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, like, pop punk albums, pop punk alternative. They're kind of a unique style. Albums that, uh, 
that like has it all you know it has like the the driving like high energy skater shit and then it has like the sad shit the emo stuff you know Although I'm not equating emo with pop punk. Pop punk rules. Emo is for little bitches. Long live pop punk. It's for kings. And I'll die for it. Um, but yeah, it just has it all. It, it, it spans the range of like subgenres within pop punk, if that makes sense. Uh, it's All In Your Head by Eve Six. Killer album that uh, brought, you know, was very nostalgic for me as well because I got into that album when I was like 12 or 13. So anyway, that's my top five, and that's a little bit more than I've said on Philosopher Friday uh, um, in the two episodes I did on Philosophy of Music about, you know, my philosophy of music and, and how I think about thinking about music, if that makes sense. Um, so anyway, kind of a different video. Hope you enjoyed it, though. Uh, see you in the next one. Cheers.